So my paper is called uh, A Backtesting Protocol in the Era of Machine Learning, and it's posted on SSRN. So let me try to motivate uh, this paper. I'm on a phone call with a major asset consultant who is recommending to his clients um, predictions from a model that's a machine learning model that has been built with two million data points, 200 different variables, the squares, the cubes, the interactions between the variables, and has remarkable predictability one month ahead. Indeed, they were claiming 98% accuracy in predicting one month ahead stock returns. And not just the direction, but the magnitude. So for example, in the worst month of the global financial crisis, there was a minus 36% return in one month. And their model predicted minus 36% return. Too good to be true? Definitely. This is a great example of somebody using machine learning tools that doesn't really understand the limitations or has misapplied these tools. Essentially, this has been overfit. There's no way that you can be that accurate in predicting something like the stock market. Unfortunately, the hype around machine learning and other quantitative tools in finance is widespread. The motivation for my paper with Harry Markowitz and Rob Arnott is to level the playing field a bit, to give investors the right questions to ask about some machine learning implementation. It's a protocol or a checklist, and quickly investors should be able to determine if the product that they're looking at is well-founded or simply overfit. The protocol has got seven main components to it. The first component is perhaps the most important. We don't have a lot of data in financial economics. We don't have the luxury of billions of observations that you would have in, for example, particle physics. We have maybe 700 monthly stock returns in the modern, modern era. So when you have so little data, it's essential that the economic foundation for every variable you're looking at is clear. So number one is a clear economic foundation for any model that is used for prediction. So number two, is very important. The researcher needs to understand what's called the multiple testing problem. If the research is, is looking at thousands of variables, then it's no surprise that something will work, and something will work purely by chance. This needs to be realized, and certain corrections need to take place to ensure the model is not overfit. So number three has to do with the data itself. So what is the sample? Um, is early data excluded? Uh, I'll give you an example. I saw a presentation where a model was fit on all data except the global financial crisis. And I asked why. And they told me that, well, the model didn't work during the global financial crisis. Well, I'm not impressed with that. So you can't just arbitrarily exclude real data and artificially produce a model that seems to fit better. So number four has to do with cross-validation. And what that means is all good modeling holds out some data, um, the so-called out of sample, to validate what you fit within the sample, and often that's done many times. That procedure is essential to avoid overfitting. Number five has to do with the dynamics of the model. So a model might work very well historically, but something might have changed, a structural change, that makes the model weaker in the most recent period. So thought has to be given 
to whether there's been any structural change that degrades the predictability of the model. Number six is complexity. The best models are simple models. When the model gets very, very complex, then it's likely overfit. There are too many parameters. It works great within the test sample, but when you apply it out of sample, when it goes to live trading, it's likely to fail. And the last part of our research protocol has to do with the research culture. And this is essential. If the research culture at the firm is that you need to find something that works, or you're not going to get promoted, or you're not going to get a bonus, then that feeds a frenzy of data mining. People need to find something. They'll look anywhere, any variable, and likely the model will be overfit. When the model's overfit, it works great in sample. When it goes to live trading, investors are disappointed. So again, a lot of this in this era of machine learning and other quantitative tools in finance that are quite advanced uh, mathematically, I think that it's time to step back. We need a protocol that people that are designing these models uh, can check off. We need a protocol, list of questions that investors can ask. Only after this happens on a routine basis can we minimize the chance that investors are duped by the hype of these tools and we reduce the probability that investors are disappointed.